present you the result uh, of the first phase of an ESA study, which is uh, called Orbit SRP Modeling for Long-Term Prediction. Uh, we are performing this uh, study with the uh, University of Bern. Uh, and we, I am from Airbus uh, Defense and Space, I, and I provide uh, expertise on uh, satellite navigation and solar radiation pressure uh, modeling. <coughs> Uh, we start this study with uh, uh, a common parameter uh, analysis from a first estimation made by University of Bern uh, uh, to understand what, to try to understand what uh, happens. Uh, what we notice first is a strong correlation between some coefficients, namely the D0 and D2C coefficient are very strongly correlated during the eclipse period, and the D2S and B1S coefficient also. To try to understand why, uh, we performed uh, uh, an orbit equinoxial parameter drift analysis, which consists to estimate what is the impact of each ECOM parameter on the orbit parameter. Uh, we can see on this table that some parameters impact the same equinoxial parameter. So D0 and D2C parameter affect box both the eccentricity parameter and B1S and D2S also. This explains the correlation. There is an exchange between these two parameters for the same orbit drift. Some parameter affects alone two different parameters, namely Y0 affects the semi-major axis and the inclination P, and B0 affects the inclination Q and the longitude drift. These are the curves of this, uh, the impact of each ECOM parameter on the six orbit parameters. Next, we perform what we call the orbit, the equinoxial parameter drift reconstructing, re reconstruction, which means that we take the estimated ECOM parameter and compute the drift uh, of the orbit. During this process, we ignore the stochastic pulses. So if the orbit parameter, uh, if the estimation of the ECOM parameter has been made with the stochastic pulses due to, the, uh, th there is a strong noise due to the presence of the stochastic pulse. So we remove the stochastic pulse from the estimation and got much more clean curves. <coughs> Next, we try to make a 3D model of the Galileo Fox satellite. Uh, we got uh, a very detailed uh, 3D model, and uh, what we made is first to tune the material characteristics uh, in order to take into account the thermal radiation. Remains one question is, what is the amount of power emitted by the radiator on the spacecraft? There are radiators on the X face, uh, on the anti sun di direction, there are radiators on the minus Z phase, and there are radiators on the Y phase. The Y phase's radiator impact is taken, is captured by the Y0 parameter of the ECOM parameter. But what is the characteristic of the OSR on the minus Z phases? We don't know. So in order to try to to know what could be the difference between the radiation of the minus Z phase and the plus Z phase, we try a new set of parameters by replacing the, D1, the D4C and D4S coefficient by D1C and D1S. <coughs> because if there is a, a mismatch between the plus Z and minus Z phase, it would lead to a D1C component. The experiment did result in a strong error in semi-major axis and uh, longitude drift and a strong correlation between some coefficient. We can see the longitude drift uh, going up to eight meters, which is quite big. In order to understand why, we performed again the uh, equinoxial parameter impact on th of this, <coughs> of this uh, parameter. And we can see that the D1S coefficient impact like Y0, the semi-major axis, and the P inclination, while B0 and D1C impact the, the inclination Q and the longitude drift. 
by adding a new parameter acting on the longitude drift, uh, <coughs> we, we make the longitude drift free in the Ocom parameter. And by making the longitude drift free, there is an exchange between the semi-major axis estimation and the longitude drift. So clearly we cannot have, we cannot add the D1C coefficient into the set of coefficients. We cannot observe it. Oh, sorry. Next, we try to, to find box ring model for the other satellite where we do not have a 3D model. Uh, for example, for, this is the block 2F, and the methodology was the following. We tried to fit uh, a box ring model. For the, B, uh, for, for the block 2F, it's not so easy because it's far from b being a box ring. <coughs> and then we tuned the box shape and some parameter of the co coefficient of the materials to fit the observation. This is an example. On the left side, we have the curves. On the, 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 the red dot points are the observation, and the green curves is the first guess of the box ring model. Clearly, it doesn't fit. After tuning, it still doesn't fit co completely, but it's much better. <coughs> so we continue by removing the coefficient we, we, we think are unnecessary and add the box ring model. The objective of this is to flatten the curves of the Ocom parameter. So on the top, you have the original box ring model, D0 coefficient shape with respect to the uh, sun declination. Uh, and the second curve is the curves after adding the box ring model. So the curves is now much more flat, which was, which was what we expected to make a long-term prediction. Some, uh, Something is very noticeable on the la last curve, which is the Galilei Y UV Y0 coefficient. We can see this kind of exponential growth when crossing, when the sun crosses the plane. Sorry. <coughs> to assess the performance, we, found we, we, we perform the uh, orbit uh, estimation, discontinuity estimation. Uh, we can see that. Uh, with the boxing model doesn't help at all to improve uh, the uh, <coughs> orbit discontinuity. Uh, and uh, the performance out of, uh, during eclipse period is very bad. Uh, it's compared here with the classical, uh, the, the, the current uh, set of coefficients used with, uh, within the, the code software with a stochastic pulse in blue. So with stochastic pulse, pulse uh, during eclipse, it behaves quite good, but without the stochastic pulse, it's not good, up to 70 uh, <coughs> centimeter. Uh, it, it is noticeable also that GPS has much more error than Galileo. So we try to understand what occurs during the eclipse period. Uh, I, I, I try to, to model different forces and uh, uh, nothing fits really which was, was occurred. So here you can see on the top curves, the curves I already show with the uh, Y0 coefficient and this exponential growth during eclipse. On the curve below, you see the reconstruction of the semi-major axis drift per day. <coughs> you can see uh, the, uh, that at uh, uh, when the sun crosses uh, the plane, uh, there is a drop of the curve, the dark blue curve. Uh, this is explained by the fact that uh, the Ocom parameter has no, yes, the Ocom parameter uh, Y0 has no powerful, is, uh, has no capacity to, uh, to produce semi-major axis drift uh, at beta equals zero. So, what we can guess is that the reality here is not these curves, but this one. So there is probably some kind of <coughs> semi-major acid drift during eclipse. So what is the explanation for this drift? Uh, I would say that I don't know. <laughs> we try a lot of explanation, like the thermal, solar thermal transient. But if it, 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 it on the right curve, you have the, the, the same Y0 estimation for Galileo 2F. You can see that the, the, the curve is very dissymmetrical. You have a strong drift of the semi-major axis 
for beta negatives and almost nothing for beta positive. So uh, it's clearly something unsymmetrical. So <laughs> it, it could not be the solar array thermal transient. It's, uh, it, another explanation could have been the yo error after eclipse, but it would require too, too large error. So my preferred explanation today is a small pointing unbalance over the whole orbit. I mean, uh, during the uh, one orbit, the uh, so semi-major axis is raised by about 25 meters and decreased by about 25 meters on the other side. So if there is a small imbalance, uh, it could really explain this small uh, drift of the semi-major axis. So something occurs during eclipse. And this, uh, this occurs once during it, <coughs> once per orbit. So one idea could have been to add again D1C and D1S, but we already see that D1C cannot be added because it, it's not a, it would decry, de, degrade the semi-major axis uh, estimation. So we added D1S only because D1S can absorb the semi-major axis drift. So after adding D1s, we got these curves for uh, IOV Y0, and we see that the exponential drift disappeared, and the drop of the semi-major axis reconstruction disappeared also. So we are very close, I think, to the reality of the semi-major axis drift of the orbit. As uh, <laughs> satellite laser ranging residual has been performed, this is the first result, uh, and the result looks to be relatively good, but uh, it has to be confirmed by further analysis. So it remains the question of the D1C coefficient co contribution. For sure, there is probably some D1C coefficient. The Z plus Z faces and the minus Z faces have no reason to have exactly the same contribution to the force. So if there is some D1C coefficient, there will be some longitude drift or semi-major axis offset. So I go to the conclusion. The lower amplitude of the GPS orbit discontinuity matrix is likely to be due to the 12 hours period. What we, I, I, do, I do not present in detail this result, but the fact that the orbit period of Galileo is, is 40 hours uh, is clearly the, the main reason why uh, <coughs> the results are bad for the discontinuity for Galileo. For GPS, we, are, uh, we have the 12 hour period and clearly it's the reason why it's better. But it's likely that uh, the performance should be more or less the same because we see that the block 2F, there is some drift of the semi-major axis during eclipse. So the large error observed during discontinuity uh, the large observed the orbit discontinuity during eclipse are likely due to the error at eclipse ec at orbit eclipse, uh, but the, the 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 wheel mechanism through it through, through what it, it affects the the, the, the semi-major axis drift is still unknown. Uh, this error is at orbital period and is not correctly captured by the classical accompanying parameters. The D1S coefficient adds the required degree of freedom to capture this drift. And the reflective dissymmetry between the front and back phase, Z phases has, no, has a significant impact on the short term performance, <coughs> uh, but cannot be estimated through the, G, uh, the GNSS measurement only. As for the RF pressure and albedo, we must rely on model uh, <coughs> or uh, laser ranging measurement. 